they will not win again. Again, that's a new statement coming up from Donald Trump this afternoon. Joining me now to weigh in on this and more is senior advisor for the Trump 2020 campaign and Trump's 2016 campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. Corey, great to talk to you. Thanks for having me back. I, I assume you've had a chance to read the whole statement. I have. Look, you remember what the president said and why he was originally sent to Washington. We need a fighter. And many of the people who end up in Washington, D.C., have been there for decades. You know, Mitch McConnell, if he f fills out this complete term, he'll be 84 years old and have spent 42 years in the United States Senate. I don't think our founding fathers thought that public service in Washington, D.C. was going to be a lifetime appointment. And what the president and his supporters have always said was, Washington is fundamentally broken. And the president pointed that out in the four years that he served in Washington, D.C., and transform the city like it's never been done before. And there is a still a strong burning desire for the 75 million people who voted for Donald Trump to see Washington, D.C. transformed. And that was obvious yesterday, watching the president drive back from his golf club to his house in Florida. You know, Corey, you know this. I know this because I live down there, too, and I see this all the time. These folks have never gone home. They're on overpasses all the time. They're out there hoping for a glimpse of President Trump. And I think the reason why President Trump still continues to be a fixture of the media uh, and the target of so many attacks and this new lawsuit that's been filed by Congress is because they see these crowds and they know that he is still a potent force. You know, those are the words used by Lindsey Graham, but it's obvious from this video. Well, there's no question about it. Look, I had the privilege to have dinner with President Trump on Friday night down in Florida at Mar-a-Lago. We talked for a long time about what his role may or may not be in the 2022 election cycle. But there's one thing that's unequivocal, and he's seen it, and the American people have reminded him of it. They support an America first agenda, not a Beltway first agenda, not a China first agenda. It's called America first. And, you know, that shouldn't be a dirty term. It shouldn't be a term that makes people cringe because we're the greatest country in the world. And what this president and President Trump did while he was in office is he was putting Americans first. And I think that's why you see these big crowds coming out and thanking the office and reminding them, reminding him that there is still people out there who want to put America first, who want to stand for the flag and kneel for God and protect the men and women of law enforcement and support our military and bring our troops home from overseas. That's what Donald Trump did in the four years he was in the White House. And these people out there are saying thank you for that. You know, out of the seven Republicans who voted to convict President Trump, Mitch McConnell, not one of them, but obviously catching a lot of flack from President Trump for the things he said after the vote here. But it is going to be very telling because, as you indicated, Mitch McConnell is going to be around for a while. He may or may not run for reelection. We will see. But it's going to be important in just a year or so when we start talking about the 2022 midterms. We have this situation in Georgia now where Senator David Perdue is relaunching his campaign and joining forces potentially with McConnell. And we've already seen the results of a divided GOP and what can happen in a state like Georgia that should be a cakewalk for Republicans. But if Mitch McConnell's still out there and President Trump's still out there, a guy like David Perdue, what are his chances of being successful if we had this kind of fighting going on, Corey? Well, I know Senator Perdue. I know him very well. I think he's an amazing public servant. You know, we need more David Perdue's in the U.S. Senate. This is a man who went out and was the chief executive officer of two Fortune 100 companies. Uh, he knows what it's like to create jobs, and he brought that common sense approach to Washington, D.C. He's not a career politician. So I love the fact that David Perdue is going to run for the U.S. Senate again. I think he's somebody that President Trump is going to support in his primary and ultimately support in the state of Georgia. So we, we have that there. And look, the pres President Trump and I have the exact same objective at the end of the day as Mitch McConnell, which is making sure that Chuck Schumer is not the majority leader of the U.S. Senate and making sure that Nancy Pelosi is not the Speaker of the House. We may have different ways of going about that, and I think you're going to see Donald Trump weighing in in primaries around this country. You'll see other organizations like mine, Fight Back Now America, uh, our super PAC, weighing in to make sure that we're picking the right candidates in some of these congressional districts, particularly the congressional districts where we know if you win a primary, you're the odds-on favorite to go on and win the general election. And we're looking at states like South Carolina and Ohio and Illinois and obviously Wyoming. Uh, we've got a great candidate that we've recruited up in Washington state to take on an incumbent up there. Someone who believes in the America First agenda, someone who's fought for our country through the military. And I think someone who's going to be a very attractive candidate for Republicans to support in, in the upcoming primary elections. Washington state, you said? Which district is that? 
Well, look, we know which district that is. That's the that's the district that's caused a lot of consternation lately with uh, with one particular female member of Congress who's been there for about five terms. And, uh, you know, I don't think she's had a serious primary challenge for a long time. And we've recruited a fantastic candidate. It'll be announced in the coming days. But I'll tell you what, that candidate is uh, someone who knows the district well, has served his country and uh, has a military background as a family man and is ready to take his service in a different format down to Washington, D.C. Corey Lewandowski, great to talk to you. Take care. Thank you. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.